seats, especially leatherback sea turtles, which is what we were studying, which are huge, like dinosaur looking sea turtles. They're they're great. How big? Uh, they can get like six to nine feet like in length. <laughs> they're huge. A nine foot yeah, sea turtle. The largest one was ten feet and weighed like two thousand pounds. <laughs> they're huge. They're giant. That's crazy. Yeah. They're crazy. They I like wish I could, like, breathe them. underwater and just live yeah. on its back for the rest of existence. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's <laughs> crazy. So Get some flippers on my yeah. feet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah, they're cool. But, yeah, they, they use the, sea, the currents to migrate and, like, find their nesting sites and all that. So. Finding Nemo. Exactly. Finding <laughs> Nemo. Yeah. <laughs> they ride the current. Yes. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Yeah, they do. That's science. <laughs> science. Science. Science in a kid's movie. <laughs> That's awesome. You ever been tased before? No. Really? No. Have you? Yeah, a couple times. Just like wait, like a gun taser? No, or? no. See, okay. it's only of the like the uh, stick one, you know. Okay, and absolutely. It's like, that doesn't really. That's not really that bad. It's like a little bit worse than like those pens, you know, that shock you. you yeah, yeah, them. absolutely. It's like a little bit more than that. But yeah, no, that's not as bad. The one, the stun gun, the one that shoots into you. Uh -huh. I've never done that, but I'm sure that's awful. I've heard like the most pain, or not most, but like a big part of the pain is like whenever you have to rip it out because you can't just get it out. You can't. Yeah. Oh, it goes into you. Yeah. Yeah. It's not like a, like I'm. My understanding of it, at least, is that you can't just like kind of like fish hook it out. Like yeah. you have to fucking rip that chunk of skin out. Ugh. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's not as bad. I think that one of the worst is getting pepper sprayed too. Uh huh. I think that's like the, I got pepper sprayed two times. I've heard that's awful. Every time, dude, it's an. You've been hour. tased and pepper sprayed. Yeah. Okay. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not some type of delinquent right uh, now. Right. This is just like me drunk with. You're with, experimental. With my boys. Yeah. You're like, oh, well, okay. how, how bad is that really? You know. Uh huh. Like I've seen people get maced before. And well, no, the first time actually it was like some like, dude, I oh. love that open mindedness, by the way. <laughs> I love it. Cause it, not many people are like that way, you know, like, just see I, how it goes. yeah, no, that's, that's dumb. Are you, are you it's, sure? it's stupidly open-minded, right? We're not advocating getting mace too, on this <laughs> but yeah, the first time it was like this, like pink sparkly, like case. So I was like, Oh, well, how bad could that be? You know, it looks so inviting. Right. And then. I got it. And the first time, I didn't know that if you like, because it, it's like a solid hour of just excruciating pain. It's like Buffalo Wild Wings blazing sauce just all over you. But like. What, it hurts more than just your eyes? Okay, well, well, yeah, it hurts everywhere. Dude, it gets in your mouth. You start to breathe it in your nose. Oh. And I didn't know that if you stood in the shower straight up, it just washes down you. And then it just burns everything as it goes down. Oh, shit. Yeah. So that was the first time that happened. And yeah. the first time that was, yeah, so was you tried it another time. Well, yeah. Cause I was like, all right, well, this is like, well, this is like <laughs> sophomore year. No, this was last year. actually. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to admit that, but yes, this was last. So year. this is like four years ago. I, fuck man. It's yeah. like, this is last I weekend. Actually. I can't lie. This, this is yesterday, <laughs> <laughs> but I got smarter on this time. Okay. I, I laid in the shower and let it go like straight down my face like this. Okay. And <laughs> that worked, dude. It was gone in like 40 minutes. Really? Yeah. Wow. I got like fifty bucks for it too. It was great. That's a I it, money money would probably change my mind <laughs> just to do it. I don't know. Just maybe for the first time, I maybe yeah. did. Uh, there might have been money involved in the first time. I don't remember though. I think there probably was. That's the incentive. Money's incentive. the motivator, man. People do some crazy shit for some money. True. A whole lot of it. There's like very few things that you're like, well, do this, and I'm like, absolutely not. And you're like, dude, like. 40 bucks it's like <laughs> uh, all right all right that's the thing you can make that happen so easy too it's like everybody throwing five you say that oh 1700s orgies and him getting drunk at the bar ben franklin had orgies oh fuck yeah Have really you heard about that no i like, i need to i wish france, i heard this whenever he was in france they would have these massive sex parties and he would be at them constantly he had a new woman all the time he would fuck with different women all the time like it was a thing really whenever he went to the bars uh whenever they were writing the new constitution he would try to spill the beans about it so people would have to like go with him to make sure that they that they wouldn't tell that they're writing a new constitution because it was against the law no shit yeah and i learned about that like literally last week and i was like holy fuck that's crazy ben franklin had orgies this is gonna be a highlight it's going to be a highlight <laughs> right there. That's crazy, though. The founding father had orgies. Wow. That's wild. He was he was a 
He was sex a, man. He was a great president. Everybody thinks he's a president. I know. Oh, they're so fucking stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how how old was he though? Because he was he, he was, was like 80, so. yeah he was like the oldest founding father, right? Yeah, pretty sure he was wow. in his 80s. He was in his 80s having orgies. What a legend! What a legend! Wow, I wish I could go back in time just to high five that man. <laughs> Maybe explore the Romans too or something like that. That's just crazy. Save the Mayans. No, that that's crazy. That's that's bananas. That's bananas. There's a whole that's, video on it. I can show. You. Yeah. But they have a lot of, you know, world records with, in my opinion, like silly things like Very silly. biggest like mall in the world, tallest tower in the world, biggest man-made, ma- man-made island. Have you seen Palm Island? Is that the, the thing that they, they literally recreated the world? That's oh, that's that's, that's the There's solar city, Dubai solar no, city. No, 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 not the solar city. There's like the whole earth, basically a continent in the ocean. So I think around Jumeirah. Yeah, yeah, Is that new? I, I think they yeah. separate. They separate like England years. from <laughs> France. Like they're not actually touching. Because I, I saw a documentary on it. This That's guy crazy. bought this tiny plot of land for like a couple million. It's literally just sand. It's like sand <laughs> that they built in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. 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 I don't think it's residable. But like, there's this. Uh, I think there's like three palm islands that are connected to the city. People have properties there. It's very very expensive to live there and. Uh, I mean, Dubai is pretty much like an island, you know. It's like a peninsula, you peninsula, know. It's yeah. it's like all surrounded by water except like one little spot. Is it man-made? Is it a no, man-made it's island? No, it's not necessarily. It's not really man-made, but it uh, certainly extended the shoreline. It's extended, yeah, yeah. definitely. Like it was like smaller. They kept on building on it, like extending the shoreline, yeah. and okay. then they made that island I was talking about, the one that looks like a palm tree. They have three of those. That's where okay. like uh, Atlantis Hotel is. Have you heard of Atlantis like that? cool like is it the first uh six star hotel yeah, seven star hotel seven star i think it's seven mm, star not atlantis that's burj al arab burj al arab is seven but star yeah, it's the atlantis. only seven star hotel in the world it's the one that atlantis world. was too no atlantis a seven star hotel is the only seven yeah. star hotel in the world do you just like wake up to the maid giving you a blowjob or like what <laughs> <laughs> what is it no like legit so i've been to burj al arab and and it's like it's cool i've been there a few times but dude it's like a bunch of fancy crap that like is uncalled for. Like Too fancy. it's just like you sit like on a dinner table and it's all like gold plated plates, forks, knives, spoons. Like you go yeah. like in your in your rooms. It's not what I'd like to pay like two three grand a night for, but it's like like old vintage classy looking like designs. You know, it's like royal royalty looking. That's, that's a funny thought too. That's true. It's like this thing that that's meant to kind of enhance your physical capabilities is simultaneously making the rest of the world fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, beautiful. I'm going to take this that. shot. I've, I've had this shot sitting here the entire time. I, I need just, good posture. I thought that was water. No, this is, this is a shot. Oh. Uh, I'm going to take, I'm going to use my cute cup. I'm going to take a sip. But you have to do it like really cute, okay? Okay. Okay. So no like, no squinching like I just took a bite out of a lemon. Yeah. I'm, I've, I've gotten better with shots. Should I, I'm going to look at the camera when I do this. Ready? And I'm gonna st- I'm gonna stare cold blooded at the camera. All right. And you, I'm gonna look. Oh no, then then one I one eye on I the camera, one eye on me. <laughs> so just stare at that. No, I just want you to be really talented. I'm not a fucking chameleon. Yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> that was what I wanted you to be. Uh, I'm not a horse. I'm eyes <laughs> on the side of my head. God damn it. Whatever. 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 Was that a condescending get whatever? Eyes, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that weird eye twitch thing you can do. I wish the camera could pick that up. Yeah, it can't though. I've, that genetic I've, fucking yeah. weird thing. Yeah, it's fun. I'm sure you know other people that can shake their eyes, and they just have not done it for you. I wish I could do that with like every part of my body. <laughs> like, I wish I could just like turn my That's body on like vibrate like mode. Just like a seizure. But like, do <laughs> it. Do it like bacon. You know, have, you, have you ever played that game like bacon on the gr- like uh, on the trampoline? Okay, what you want to do is you you you're like oh you're, you have to lay flat with your body extended like erect. Okay. Let's use the word erect because that's a fun word. And um, so you want to lay with your body completely flat on a trampoline while your friends recklessly jump up and like down trying to break you. Yeah, it's literally cracked the egg, but you're bacon. Yeah, we I sizzling to, bacon. Oh, beautiful. I used to have a trampoline in my backyard, and it was 
hor- horrible. There was no like padding around the outside, like at the springs. And then like four of them, four of the four or five of the springs were just gone. So it was just this huge hole. And I had woods in the back of my yard, and it was a slight incline. So if you just jumped wrong, you would fall through the hole and like down the hill into the woods. And one time, now this was really great. We were playing like some some game where I had my eyes closed. Not a great not a great game on a trampoline like that. And I fell through one of the holes and like. I don't know, like, one of the poles was there, and I just, like, my whole leg just got, like, ripped up, like, my thigh. It was, like, totally bruised. It was bloody, bloody, it was just disgusting. So, trampolines are great. Yeah, really safe for kids. Wow. Really yeah. safe. <laughs> and I was, like, a teenager. Because once so. you lose one little spring, you start losing the other oh, ones yeah. around it. Yeah, it was just gone. Like, people would fall through it. It was really unsafe. And, like, we would play crack the egg, and, like, people would get, like, nosebleeds and stuff. Like, my brother, like, jumped off the roof onto it one time. He tried to jump off the roof with roller skates on. Onto the trampoline. No. <laughs> yes. I don't know if that, I don't. I don't know if this what? actually successfully happened. I don't remember if this was, uh, like, <laughs> and I. I don't remember if this was an idea or uh, something that actually happened. But I would not put it past my brother. I don't know. That is. Maybe it didn't happen, but I yeah, at least talked about it at one point. That is. Really reckless. smart. That <laughs> is wow. It's just reckless. It's like so stupid. I admire the fuck out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> it's crazy. Like last weekend, I went in a boogie with a hoodie, and just no shirt under it. And is that a rapper name, by the way? Boogie Boogie with a hoodie. <laughs> is that really? Yeah. yeah definitely. Is. Oh fuck yeah! <laughs> Probably where he got it, dude. There honestly. you go. Yeah. But <laughs> from you, from you specifically. <laughs> right. Well, the guy, the guy told me. At the door, he goes, oh, you got to take your hoodie off. I'm like, hey, I can't. Like, I don't have a shirt under this. They're like, oh, well, tuck your hood in to, like, the collar. <laughs> I'm like, dude, why? Really? Like, that looks way worse. Yeah, that looks terrible. Yeah. That looks way worse than if I had a hoodie on. You just on have a fucking place. hump back. Yeah. Hey, yo, camel. I don't get that. Camel man. bitch. <laughs> that makes no sense. That doesn't make any sense to me There's either. so many just, like, weird rules. Like, you can wear sweatpants uh-huh. if, like, the strings are tucked in. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> so... I don't know. Man. I was just thrown off by yeah, like the uh, the whole like dress apparel thing. Yeah, it's like it's boogie, dude. Exactly. You're not going to a ballroom dance, you know. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's right. fucking boogie. It's a fucking college <laughs> bar. Calm down. There's broken glass and alcohol. This floor is so sticky. Like the floor is always so sticky. Take it down a couple notches. Exactly. You know? Calm down. And it's by this dude named Dan Cummins, and it is like the, the what they did for torture is absolutely insane. What human beings are capable of doing to each other. It's mind-boggling and it's disgusting but there's something to be learned there like you said like we i think it's very important to be exposed to this information just to just to know just to know and like i think about the bible when that comes up to my mind because think about the crucifixion like they did that to other people it wasn't just doesn't wasn't just christ and think about what they did to him the crown of thorns the whippings the everything like they spikes hands feet stab him in the thigh or side to make sure that he was completely dead and drain all of his fluids from his body like it's disgusting and if you if you've never seen the passion of the christ i'm scared to watch it but based off of my parents testimonies it's the worst thing that you could ever see really it's completely disgusting and it makes you want to cry like that some that people could do that to another person mm-hmm. like it's really that bad and apparently they did a really good job of like recreating it and like recreating the gore yeah and, like just that's horrible and uh, and in the bible they only talk about it so much but whenever you think about it that it was a thing that happened to probably hundreds if not thousands of individuals and they it was absolute torture and that's what i think could possibly be the worst thing minus the viking thing where they would like cut open your back and pull out your lungs and your rib cage to make it look like an eagle like other than that, while you're alive while you're alive they could keep you living doing that i mean to an extent like that's uh, it, wow it's that's disgusting. a high level of creativity that you got to go put into fucking torture somebody that is it's ridiculous absolutely nuts I know, I know in the Passion of the Christ, uh, Mel Gibson, it's his hands that are, are nailing in Christ's hands, like putting the nails in, into Christ's hands. And I think there's a lot of like symbolism in that. I wonder what his reasoning for doing so was. I'm not sure. I also heard that the actor that played Christ, it was either him or it was Mel Gibson. They got electrocuted. Like they got um, hit by lightning, shook by lightning. After, oh, really? Like either after or while shooting that movie. 
No shit. Mm-hmm. Like, did they live or? I think they lived. Okay. Seems like people that get struck by lightning live like a lot. You think that would kill you? Yeah. Like, you think that would kill you for sure, right? Like, if you, if you, first time ever hearing that that's even a possibility, like you, you learn what lightning is, and then you're like, what do you think would happen if you got hit by that? It's like, dude, you'd be dead. Like, you'd yeah. be dead within seconds. It's like, like it's not even like a question: Would you live? It's like, how quick would you die? And my my answer would be like five seconds or less. But I feel like you hear a lot of people that have like been. Well, it's also crazy because it's so it happened so fast that sometimes you wouldn't even recognize that it happened because it's wow. literally like half a second. Yeah, like it true. The ground. So how crazy is it that it could even last that long through your body? So really really kill you or would it not kill you like that's it's really a toss-up on how long that lightning stays there i suppose mm. that's what i that's what makes me think about it on whether it's a chance for you to live or not yeah i feel like i feel like even just that much force that much power whatever like you would assume i mean i don't have a great understanding of electricity as a whole but like you, you would just assume that that shit's gonna knock you the fuck out oh yeah it's gonna take you out i'm sure he had i'm pretty sure he had to go to the hospital there's no way he was just like yeah right walking up like hey okay <laughs> he's doing somersaults after yeah. running home to his parents there's no way <laughs> side of a silverback gorilla versus a grizzly bear right and the two uh okay so the two this is how they like match up right their bite force, pretty much the exact same. Like the the gorilla was a little bit stronger uh, bite force, but not too much. Like it was very pretty much the exact same. Uh, height was the the bear is ten feet tall, and then the gorilla is like five eleven, so like human height. Bears are ten feet tall. Yes. What yes. The fuck? I didn't know that. And then I know, right? Yeah. Wow. It's massive. Whenever they just like stand up on their back. Damn! If you would have said that, I would have thought that the gorilla is bigger. I would have thought that. I, I know. I thought the gorillas were bigger than five eleven. Do they, do they 11, weigh more you know? though? Yeah. The, well, the, no. The gorilla. Uh, the gorilla weighs five hundred, and then the grizzly weighs nine hundred. But, oh, but that, the gorilla, and I don't. I don't know like where they're getting like the this lifting amount or like weight from. Yeah. But the the strength of the gorilla is can lift. Oh fuck! What was it? Oh, four times as much. It was like four thousand four hundred pounds. And then the yeah. bear can lift like one thousand one hundred. Damn, I don't know, dude. It's like a bigger body style for like a, or like for like a guy who's stronger that has a smaller frame. Yeah, right, right. And I've heard no, both arguments because I, I was really curious, especially with like your wrestling background. Like yeah. I was curious to see what you'd say because I, uh, I've heard like the argument of oh, if the grizzly gets him on the ground, like. Then the gorilla's screwed. And I've heard the exact the exact opposite. Yeah, I mean the bear's probably not doing like jujitsu though. Right, you know? true. Like, it's probably just I feel like there's not really like a tactic to it. They kind of just like go at each other and try to fuck each other up. Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know. That'd be a good one though. I'd like to see that for sure. But the, the gorilla could maybe like throw him off. He, right. He's he's lifting a lot. I mean, well, he's if strong. the bear's like ten times bigger though, you know, mm-hmm. like ten, or like twice as tall, you know. And I feel like the gorilla would be like going like striking force, like punching almost. And I feel like the the bear would be going like claws. I don't think I've seen a gorilla fight. I don't think so either. These are all assumptions. Do they use their fists? I'm assuming they do. Wow. I feel like most people are assuming too that like a gorilla is fighting like a human, you know, because like they have the same build as us. Like to where they would go up and they'd be like fighting like a boxer, like like a kangaroo. I, I don't know. I don't know what would come with that. I don't know. I feel like they'd be more mobile, the gorilla would, and then more, like, coordinated with their hands and feet and stuff. But these are all assumptions. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, dude. That'd be a good one, though. I'd like to see. I think that they use, like, the moon and the stars to find their way because the sea turtles, they come back to the beaches that they were born at. So um, that's why most of the hatchlings – come out at night too they do also because if they come out during the day they'll like cook as they try to they'll die as they try to make their way back to the beach so it's better for them to come out at night so they don't die and so that they can kind of but why would they die coming out in the daytime because Because of the sun yeah because it's so hot it would just cook them really yeah it's bad well how long are they on the beach for um they have to it depends on where they um make the nest 
it's better for the nest to be a little closer to the vegetation, like a little further away from the sea, so uh-huh. they don't get washed away from the tide. Right. They bury them, and if it. But close like, enough to where they can navigate, mm-hmm. the the offspring yeah. can na- navigate back to the ocean. Yeah, and not so close to the rainforest that the animals in the rainforest will come and eat them. So it's like this perfect little, there's this perfect space uh-huh. for a nest, and that's one of the things that we would do is if we came across um, a sea turtle on our walks is if they're laying, well, we didn't know, we weren't trained to this extent. We were just kind of helping the research assistants who were trained to do all this. And they would um, determine whether or not the nest was in a good place for poaching, tide, and like animals who come and hunt the nests. And they would, most of the time they do move them just because mostly for poaching. Poaching was a big issue on the beach and it's gotten a lot better since the research assistant. Define poaching. Like so um, the l- usually locals um, will come and dig up the sea turtle nests or even kill the moms for meat, and they'll cook the eggs. It gets kind of a part of the culture. Um, most of the time it's just not realizing that what they're doing is impacting this species and preventing it from being able to flourish. Uh, so they do a lot of... The program I'm with, at least, I was with EP- Ecology Project International. They do a lot of education to talk to locals and about not poaching and people international to less pollution because the pollution in the water affects the sea turtles and all that. But So they try to prevent poaching, the locals coming and taking the eggs or uh-huh. anybody coming and taking the eggs. And if they can't find the reason, they move the nest so that they don't, we can't find it and the researchers mark where they moved it so that they can come back. They come back 60 days later, something like that, 50 or 60, to where they left the nest and they put a stick in it because that's when the hatchlings are getting ready to hatch and then they check on it regularly to see if they see any track marks and when they do, they'll dig up the nest and see if there was any left behind, if all the eggs, like what percent of the eggs did hatch and all that kind of thing. Really? Yeah, it's pretty cool. To kind of like help the survival rate, I'm assuming? Yeah, they pretty much are just, they just take down a whole bunch of information, and the idea is to monitor it, but these sea turtles live for, we don't even know how long, they can live for a long time, and they only come back to nest every four years, so it's, it just takes time to... They only nest every four years? Yeah. Like, at that particular beach, or they... Just, like, in general individual sea turtle. So, like, there'll be sea turtles coming every year. Absolutely. But it's not going to be the same turtle, turtles every year. It'll That's be interesting. Like four years from now, but they just have like they had just have these binders full of data. Because when we we come across a sea turtle, we would measure their length and width, um, their temperature, how much light there was in the sky from the moon, and light pollution from a city nearby. Um, that impacts it. Mm-hmm. Because they're attracted to the light, so they're trying to determine if they're nesting at that beach is being impacted like where they nest is being impacted by and that's that's proven that they're attracted to light and Um, is that like kind of they're trying like that's another part of the that kind of plays upon the theory of if they're like use the stars to navigate back to the coast Mm -hmm, a little bit that's crazy if that's what they actually do yeah i mean sea turtles are animals are interesting they do a lot of things that we don't really understand just the whole it's pretty much like a just think about all how prescription drugs and like the ad- epidemic with people in America getting addicted to it. Like uh-huh. there was some stupid statistic like uh, in America, we prescribe enough prescription painkillers to like medicate everyone in America, like every single person around the clock for like five months. Like we do that a year. So it's like, what's going on with that? And there is another thing. It was like, as soon that's as a crazy stat, right? Like that's ridiculous. Also, they said something about 80% or whenever they like change the formula of the Oxycontin pill uh-huh. to uh, one that you can't like crush up or you can't like somehow turn it into like heroin, you know, so you can inject it. Okay. It lost like 80% of its um, just like value or um, I don't even know what it is. Just just the like people Maybe buying like it or, yeah, or yeah, 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 something like that. But that's crazy. 80%. That's crazy. Just because just you can't inject it anymore. It's like, they, they, cause that's clearly they're buying it for this right. other purpose. Yeah. That's insane. Dude, that means 80% of the people <laughs> are like, are doing that shit, you know? So, so is that usually how it works? Like, do people start like, okay, so say you get into heroin and you're like addicted to heroin. 
do you usually get yourself off by like taking like Oxycontin or do you work your way the opposite way? Like do you start taking like a pain pill, uh, maybe like, like Xanax, then go to Oxycontin and then go to, I mean, I don't know what like the latter would be yeah. and then go to heroin. Cause I've heard people turning to heroin because it's cheaper and it's right, an opiate. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I know a couple guys actually, unfortunately that like have got into heroin, but mm-hmm. it was because like they hurt their, broke their leg or something. And then they prescribe their prescribed pain pills or like Oxycontin or whatever. And, um, they pretty much just start taking those because so my boy actually this is last weekend he got his nose broken uh by my other friend which is a different story but he they prescribed him oxycontin and they like he didn't really have anything wrong like they just set his nose and then he was fine like it obviously hurt a little bit but they gave him a prescription for like 50 or 60 oxycontin like dude what do you need that much for yeah you know? right like i don't know i just i just think that's ridiculous too just the amount the amount that they give you at a time and same with my riddle and whenever 